situations, even though we're, we're locked in and have quarantined millions of Americans, people all over this globe have been confined to their homes to help curb the, the spread of this virus. We're all in the same boat. Many have stayed home and have followed the guidelines. And some have kept up with a few who know who you are, and some haven't followed any at all. And that's because we all react differently to stressful situations. We all act differently. We all have our own way of thinking, our own way of uh, what is right for us. Many of us, even in this parking lot, some of us have anxiety, worry, and fear. There's others that are frustrated. They're mad. They're angry at somebody or something or uh, some government or some official something. They're just mad and angry. Some are depressed. Some are bored. Some are, are even having uh, disorders because of this situation we're in. And I feel like all of us are sensing a little bit of some of that or maybe all of that. But there's one thing that we all have in common, and it is this one question. I imagine that you would probably ask this question to a lot of people, and I've got a, a several different opinions. But the question is, when... Will this end? How I many has asked that question? When is this going to end? When is this going to be over? When is we going? When are we going to be done with this? And we're not really asking when is this virus going to end. What we're really asking, what we're really wanting, is when is the social distancing going to end? When is this frustration? of the unknown going to end. When are we going to get back to normal? I'm tired of the unknown. Is anybody with me on that? We're tired of the unknown. And because of that unknown that this world is in, we all have that feeling. We all got that. We all are, are, are the same in that. Because of the unknown, we feel like we are in the dark. And when we're in the dark, we can't see exactly where we're going. We don't know 
exactly where we're headed because we're in the dark. Can you imagine uh, being dropped off in the middle of, uh, of a desert and it's pitch black and you have no idea which way to go to get to civilization? It's frustrating to be in the dark because in the dark we can fall, in the dark we can get hurt, in the dark we could be going in the wrong direction, going farther than closer to where we want to be. Nobody wants to be in the dark. I preached to our, our minister that preached in the past few weeks about trusting in God and having hope. Hold on and pray every day. And if there's ever a time that this world needs hope, it is right now. This world needs hope. It needs to get a glimpse of light and walk in light and know what light is all about. But today I want to share with you just a, a little bit of joy in the journey. I want you to be happy in this journey that we're walking in. I believe the Christian people ought to be the happiest, the most excited, the most focused people on the planet. Why? Because we don't walk in darkness like others do. We see things differently. We look at things differently. Why? Because we have light that shine on things where we can see things that others might not be able to see so clearly. So I want to share a little light in this dark time. Hallelujah. I want to remind you, greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. We've got a reason to have joy in our lives. I've told a few times in the past few months on uh, from Exodus, it is a time that we have talked about that took place thousands of years ago when the people of God were in quarantine. The people of God were in isolation. The people of God were in social distancing. Today I want to share a little more of that. Something that the people of God need to see and, and realize that the people of God have a different perspective than the rest of the world. For some that are watching, you may say, I never knew it was like that. I never knew they felt like that. It's because we see things differently. We, we look at it through spiritual lenses. We look at it through the Word of God. We look at it through Holy Ghost uh, direction in our lives. We don't see things. We don't have that same kind of fear, worry, and doubt. Because we know God that's got it all under control. And it's not just words. It's something that we see and feel and operate in. If you have your Bibles, turn to Exodus. Exodus chapter 10. Very familiar story of the Lord putting plagues on the, on the land of Egypt. Because he wanted his people to be free. He wanted his people to live in a, in a way of, of freedom. Exodus chapter 10, and starting in verse 21, it reads like this. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thy hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. I can imagine how, how, how dark it was where you could actually feel the darkness. I've never been in that, uh, that deep of darkness to the point where you could actually feel the darkness. And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven and there was a thick darkness in the land of Egypt for three days. They saw not one another, neither rose from their place were for three days. So they was uh, quarantined, they were sat down in the darkness, in the darkest part of their life. Uh, they were in their homes, afraid to leave couldn't even go outside because if they did go outside they probably wouldn't be able to find their way back. There was no light in their place. But read on verse 23. It says, But all the children of Israel had light in their dwelling. While there was darkness all around, the people of God had light in their dwelling. And I want to share just a few moments uh, to let you know that God's light is still on today. His light is still on for His people. 
I want you to look at this story for a quick moment. Imagine with me the darkness that covers the land of Egypt. It was so thick that you could not see your hand in front of your face. I, I've been in a dark place and I can at least see a, a shadow, but they were so dark in this place. They could not see nothing. It was a, it was a, something, a place where they had never been and never felt. There was fear that came on the people of Egypt. So dark that they did not leave their homes because of fear of what would happen if they had left. If they had left their homes, they probably wouldn't be able to find their back. Because when they walked out, no matter if it was morning, noon, or evening, it was so dark, they could not see nothing. And because it was so dark, they could not tell time. They couldn't tell when day started and night ended. It was in confusion. Everyone was disoriented because of the darkness. No one could escape the darkness. But look at verse 23. It says, but the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. In our reading, God is doing something. Hallelujah. He is wanting to have the children of, of Israel released out of Pharaoh's land. Released and having freedom. Pharaoh has imprisoned them and enslaved them. But that has never been the intent for God and his people to be enslaved by anyone or anything. God is doing something here in scriptures. And God is still doing things in our lives to try to free people from the darkness that's all around us. Here we see uh, that God is at work. He is sending ten plagues. Each plague is his own disaster. Can you imagine the river turning into blood? Let that hardly go by. Imagine frogs all over the place. Could not take a step without frogs. Fly, uh, flies, gnats, livestock that died, boils all over your body, hail, locusts, you name it. God is giving me attention, whatever he's got to do to get people out of darkness. And I'm telling you, God is still in that same business uh, to set people free uh, that are in bondage of darkness, and he wants them to come out. God uses tough times to rescue his people. Could we be just another example of what God is trying to do in this day and hour to reach us, to draw us out of dark times? Here's what I know. God will use anything to help us to get free. And there's going to be a lot of people during this time that are going to give their heart to God. There's going to be a lot of people that's starting to watch on social media the preaching and the presence of God. And they've never felt it before, but they've been in church all their life, but they've never seen a service like this. they never felt the presence of God like this. And they're going to feel something and say, where is that in my church? I want to feel that presence. I want to know a God that's that real, that I can feel him. People are saying that they've never even been to church, don't even believe in going to church. They're saying we're coming close to the very end. This world is even saying something is happening. God is up to something. When it got dark in Egypt, the people of God still had light in their dwelling. Some were fearing for the worst, but the children of God had light. They was able to see. They was able to prepare. They was ready for an exodus in their lives. See, in the midst of confusion, in the midst of disaster, in the mix of complexity and uncertainty, there was this darkness that some could not escape, but the children of God had light in their dwelling. I love that. What do you think about that? When all else seems to be dark, God's people still have light on. When the darkness is surrounding this whole globe, the people of God look at it differently than the rest of the world. When everything else seems hopeless to many people, for God's people, the light is still on. We can see light at the end of the tunnel. We know there's coming a day. We're preparing. We're getting ready. When everyone else is having all kinds of emotional and mental and spiritual crisis. The people of God 
still have light on. Are you getting this? Are you hearing this? The Egyptians could not leave the house for fear of the unknown, but God's people had clear direction. They didn't lose the way in, the, in this pandemic. They didn't lose the way. They led the way for others to see. And that is exactly what we have got to be doing. We can't be losing our way at this time, and, but leading the way in this time. The people of God see things differently than people that are in darkness. I'll give, me, I'll give you an example. A few weeks ago, we lost one of our very own, Brother Cecil. And even though we miss him, we think of him, we tell the family, we're sorry for your loss. But at the same time, the people of God are excited because we know that Brother Cecil has made it. We know that Brother Cecil has moved up. We know that Brother Cecil has graduated from this life. Even though we, we, we feel the joy and the presence and the peace of God that comes over us. And it sounds kind of strange that when someone dies, we're happy, we're excited, we see it as a blessing. But there's a part of us that offers our condolences to the family. But there's another part that is excited because we know that Brother Cecil made it. Because of the light that was on, that he could find a way. He had the light in him, and we know that he has made it to that place. And that same light that was on for him, that same light that is on for us, uh, is on for those people that are in our community, in our homes, on Facebook, and across this road. The light is still on for you. But we see things differently. Look at scripture. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13, it says, Now, dear brothers and sisters, we want you to know what will happen to the believers who die, so you will not grieve like people who have no hope. See, we the people of God, we, we look at things differently. We don't want people to, to grieve like those people that are in darkness, the people that have no hope. A few verses later on, it says, The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ. That's how we see it. That's how we know it. We'll rise first. He's one of the lucky ones. He's gone first. The dead in Christ will rise first. And a lot of people stop there. Well, I've got plenty of time. I, I, I'm still young. I still got some health. I, I don't, I, there's no, death is not close for me. See, it doesn't take until, until death to make it that day. Because the Bible reads on. Because there are going to be people that are alive and well. Some that are in darkness and some that are in light. The Bible says, they which are alive and remain. That's those that are walking and living in light. Uh, shall be caught up together with them. Those that have died up first. With them to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we be with the Lord forever. See, you have hope today. You have hope. Because light is still shining. And we're trying to give you light in a dark, dark world. You see, when you're in darkness, you can't see what God is trying to do in your life. See, many would say Brother Cecil was a very loving, kind, caring, giving person. But what you are really seeing is a glimpse of the light that was in him. That was the presence and the power of God that led his life. And that is what we have to have in order to make it. Still today is the light of God in our lives. The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 5, starting verse 14, Ye are the light of the world. Now if you don't read your word and study your word, we can just read that one line and say, okay, I'm a person of light. But We've got to understand all the scriptures. See, we're not born in the light. The Bible says we were born in the sin and in iniquity we were born. But God has made a way through light. Somehow, 
God to get that light inside of us. His light inside of us. He made a way for us to be able to be born again of the water and of the spirit to become children of light. That's how Brother Cecil became a, a light in his house. He became a light to his family. He became a light to his family, his friends, and all that knew him. So you've got to make up your mind. I'm going to live in darkness. Or I'm going to live in light. I want to live a, an example life like Brother Cecil did. Or I'm just going to do whatever I want and we'll see how I end up in this dark, dark world. See, but it doesn't end there. As we read on, it says, You are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. In other words, they lift it up. They don't light and say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live for God. I'm going to go to God. I'm going to serve God. They go to church. They get an experience with God. And then we don't see it no more. He says, you can't be like that. You can't be a man that has a, a light put on the bushel. He says, you've got to put it on a candlestick. You've got to hold it up so that you give light to the others, so that you can see from the light being extended through you. He said, and it giveth light to all that are in the house, just like Brother Cecil did, and many that have died before him. They live a life that the light of Jesus Christ was inside of them, showing others the way, showing his family, his kids, his grandkids, and the rest of this world. I imagine if you was to ask some of his immediate family, they could probably say some things that's not so nice because they saw sometimes the other side. But when we have the light of Jesus Christ, that light outshines in this dark, dark world. And I know that Brother Cecil had a light to, to show so many people. And I want to encourage his family. I want to encourage his kids. I want to encourage his grandkids to be like your pop pop. To have a light of God living inside you. Not just choosing God one day, but choosing God every single day. I want to be a child of light. I want to make it to heaven and I want to see him. It's not just die and hope you go. It's live in light and prepare to go. It's not just a one-time decision. It's an everyday decision. You see, when we look at light, or when we have light, the Bible says in the next verse, let your light, look at it, your light shine. So it was God's light that was shining. But somehow it gets a part of us to where it becomes our light. Let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works. And when they see your good works, they don't look at you and say, great job, good job. The Bible says they glorify your Father, which is in heaven. In other words, they're not looking at you. They'll see the light that's in you, but they see our Heavenly Father. They see the light that He has shown to this dark, dark world. We are the light of the world. You know what interests me about the scripture? There's no recourse. There, God does not give us an option to turn the light off and on when we choose to. It's a good day. I'll let my light shine. Or today's not such a good day. I'm just going to go ahead and turn the switch off. God doesn't give us that option. He says, in the good days, the light is still on. In the bad days, the light is still on. For the children of God, the light is still on. If you are a believer of Jesus Christ, your light must be shining. And we need to make sure that we have joy in our journey. Hallelujah. Even though we're still going through dark times, the people of light look at it differently. We know that God's in control of everything that we're facing, so we don't have to worry. We don't have to fear. We do have hope. So stop looking at how dark it is out there. And start seeing how God wants us to live our lives. Start seeing how much God really loves us and cares for us. Start looking at how he has made a way for us. Look for him. Walk in light. Stop falling in darkness. But begin to see the favor of God 
for the children of God. You see, I see things differently. And so can you. Sometimes we don't realize that we miss it. We feel like we're right. We feel like our opinion is right. But John tells us, talking about mankind and talking about God being in our lives, John chapter 1, verses 4 and 5 says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shined, where? In darkness. But here's where we're in a dark world. The darkness did not comprehend it. You see, it's possible, hear me, it's possible to be so deep and dark, so dark that you can feel it. That you don't even comprehend or realize that you're in darkness. You think you have direction. You think you're seeing, but you have missed it. You don't see it how others see it. You're just like the scripture says that the light shine in darkness. For those that were in darkness, they did not comprehend it. You see, there is there is a darkness that is so dark, and that darkness is knowing, not knowing who God really is. If you really don't know who he is, if you don't have a personal relationship with him, you're in darkness and you don't even realize it. There is a dark place as it is in this world and that's when we don't know how much he loves us and we don't know the price that he paid. We don't know that salvation is available to all of us. It's available to all of us. And not everyone sees that. A lot of people just think they have it because they read a verse and they hang everything up on one verse and they don't have read all the word of God or studied or applied it. But when you start taking all the pieces of the puzzle, and I can't give them all today, that's why we encourage people to start staying connected in the parking lot, start staying connected in Zoom rooms, start getting connected on Facebook. You're going to start getting pieces of the puzzle. Start getting connected when we do come back together and are able to go back into the house of God where you can start coming and being a part and receiving the presence of God and receiving pieces of the puzzle that you can begin to see light in a dark, dark world. John 8 and 12 says, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have life have light of life. First Peter 2 9, God said, you are called out of darkness to walk into his marvelous light. First Thessalonians 5, 5 says, you are children of light and of day. We do not belong to darkness or night. Psalms 27, 1 says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I Thy word is a lamp 
That's, how, that's why it's so important that we continue to have church any way we can in Zoom rooms, in, in, in our homes, in, in Facebook. We need to continue getting the Word of God in our hearts. It's the only thing that's going to help us not sin against God. Thy word is a lamp that gives light to my feet and light unto my path. You see, this world doesn't know much about the word of God. It is something that is put on a shelf. It is something that they own but do not read and study. But for the people of God, it is the only way that we can have light is have the word of God in our hearts and in our lives because it is what is giving light in a dark world. Because we have light, we see things differently than the rest of the world. They don't see things. Why do you do this? Why do you do that? Why do you go to church so much? They don't see it. But when we have the word of God and tells us that when you see the day approaching, so much the more we ought to be able to assemble together we ought to be able to share his word and apply his word and be obedient to his word because it is the light that gets inside of us so that no matter if we are one of the dead in Christ or we're one of the alive and remain the bottom line for us is we want to go up yonder this world justifies sin. It hides it under a bushel and tries to legalize all of its sin. They don't see it as darkness. That's why this world is the way it is. They don't see some of the things that they're justifying. Some of the things that they say, well, this is how I want to live. So dark that you can feel the darkness. But the people of God see things differently because we look through the lens that God has given us to see him. Right now God is shining in dark places and he's not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. This is not a message to hurt you. This is a message to help you. This is a message of hope. This is a message to remind you God's light is still on for you. We have this light, we have this hope, and we can begin to see things clearly for our path tomorrow. We're not worried about so much as the world is about just having and getting back to normal because we're doing everything we can to stay connected to God any way, any how, any shape we can. God does some awesome things in dark times. And we need to experience the salvation and walk in the light that he has given us. We need to let this dark world know they need to be able to see somehow, some glimpse of light. And it needs to be in you. You are the light of the world. Let your light so shine that others can see. Don't hide it. Put it on a candlestick. Lift it up for the world to see. They're in a dark place and they don't see things like you see it. So you gotta show them. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. There's still hope today. Hallelujah. Where well, there's still hope today. Facebook, there's still hope today. Zoom room and parking lots. Right now, we are closer than that day than ever before. There is hope. I'm thanking God that the light is still on. Can we pray right where we're at? Can you bow your heads? Hallelujah. If you're at home, get on your knees right there on your couch. If you're in your cars right there when you're in your seat, lean forward on your steamer or on your dash. And let's begin to pray right now. God, you know where I'm at. God, I don't want to be, Lord, lost in darkness. I don't want, God, to hide my candlestick. I don't want, to God, to get lost in this last day, God. But help me, Lord God, to stir up the fire. Stir up that gift of the Holy Ghost. Let your light, God, shine in my life. Come on. Let people see.
see your good works. Good works ain't going to save you. But good works will lead others to God. You can't do enough to save you. Saved, but you can't follow the word of God and become saved. Let light shine. Come on, right where you're at. Oh, forgive me my sins. Forgive me what I've done. We met God in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission, the washing away of our sins. We follow exactly what the Word of God says. We don't baptize in the titles. We baptize in the name that has all power and all authority in the name of Jesus Christ. If you have not been baptized, contact us, call us. Let us know on Facebook. We will baptize you this week. Sorry. 